Happy Sunday, everyone. I hope that you've had a chance to attend church online today. Um, and if not, you know, there are plenty of places that you can go. Um, I highly recommend uh, Church Without Religion with Andrew Farley or uh, Valley Church in Vacaville. California. Uh, those are two of our favorites. And so if you haven't had a chance to attend church online today, I just recommend that you check those out. And you know, there's a lot of good ones out there, but those are the ones that we really enjoy. Happy Sunday, Nancy. It's good to hear from you and it's good to have you on the live again. So I'm going to go ahead and get started uh, today. Uh, in yesterday's live, I shared that the fundamental reason we are miserable when we don't forgive others is because we are brand new creations in Christ. And because of our eternal spiritual union uh, with the ultimate forgiver, we are forgiven forgivers at heart and any time that we don't express our true identity we're going to experience unfulfillment and so that uh yesterday was the first facet of forgiving others and that is that we are forgiven forgivers at heart and to today i'm going to share with you from my newest book 50 days in his pursuing love devotional, uh, getting to know the one who loves you first, who loved you first and loves you most. And I'm going to share with you day six or day 26. And it, the title of it is the final facet of forgiving others. And <clears throat> this is a, a facet that's not often taught, or at least I didn't hear it. Uh, taught um, and until I was in my early 40s so I uh, happy Sunday um, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name but thank you so much for uh, joining the live so good to have you Joe maybe maybe that's how we pronounce it so okay if you will just put yourself in receiving mode, remember that this is written from the perspective of Jesus speaking directly to you. So just receive these words, uh, which are based in scripture uh, to you today. My lovely bride, realizing that you are a forgiven forgiver at heart is the first facet of forgiving others. You now understand that your deepest desire is not to withhold forgiveness from someone who has wounded you. Forgiving others is an authentic expression of the new you in me. But this understanding alone does not make your forgiveness toward those who have hurt you complete. Remember when I told you that you could do nothing apart from me? While it's certainly true that you will never be apart from me, you can live just as if you do not possess the same power that raised me from the dead. When you choose to do life apart from reliance on my indwelling spirit, you are carrying out the desires of the flesh. And when it comes to forgiving someone who has hurt you, unless you trust my perfect power through your inability to completely forgive, the process will remain unfinished. As a result, you will live in confusion and experience unrest in your soul and body. Is there someone you need to forgive? If so, agree with me saying out loud lord i want to forgive insert the name of the offender because i am a completely forgiven forgiver in you 
thank you for forgiving me with no strings attached. I confess that I cannot forgive, insert the name of the offender, from the flesh. So right now, by the power of your spirit in and through me, I choose to forgive, insert the name of the offender, for, insert the name of the offense. Lord, thank you that your power to forgive is fully expressed through my inability to forgive. When the enemy tries to convince me that I have not forgiven, insert the name of the offender, I will remind him that not only have I forgiven, insert the name of the offender, but that the forgiveness was completed by your power in and through me. Sometimes the person you need to forgive most is yourself. If you are punishing yourself for things you have done wrong, then you are devaluing my precious blood that was poured out to pardon the sins of your lifetime. <clears throat> Go back through the above confession and replace the name of the offender with your name. Now smile, take a deep breath, and relax in the freedom that comes from forgiving others and yourself. Hi, Kathy. Thank you so much for joining the live today from Paraguay. Good to have you. <clears throat> yeah, take a drink right quick. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> just in case you missed it, the final facet of forgiving others is trusting Christ's perfect power within us to complete the forgiveness process through us. <clears throat> As new creations in Christ, we want, <coughs> excuse me, we want to forgive others from our new heart, but the power to carry it out comes from dependence on Christ's spirit within us. We're going to look at two passages uh, to help us understand this more clearly. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 5 and 7 through 10, the Apostle Paul writes, I will not boast except in regard to my weakness. Because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, I implored the Lord three times that it might leave me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now that is a powerful passage about how God wants us to boast in our weaknesses because it's when we know that we cannot do something in and of our, you know, our natural abilities that we are depending on his spirit in and through us to accomplish that. And I want to read uh, 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 through 10 from the Living Bible because I love uh, this translation. I am with you. That is all you need. My power shows up best in weak people. 
Now I am glad to boast about how weak I am. I am glad to be a living demonstration of Christ's power instead of showing off my own power and abilities. Since I know it is all for Christ's good, I am quite happy about the thorn and about insults and hardships, persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The less I have, the more I depend on him. I love that God's power shows up best in weak people. And I am glad to be a living demonstration of Christ's power instead of showing off my own power and abilities. Isn't that awesome? I, I, I love that. I love that how Christ can be glorified through, most glorified through our weaknesses because we know it's him doing it through us. And in Romans 15, 18, Paul writes, I will not presume to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me. <laughs> I love that. I love that. His life was all about depending on Christ to accomplish his purposes through him. And so um, anytime, anytime that you need to forgive yourselves, yourself or others, I want you to remember that number one, you are a forgiven forgiver at heart. And that's what you want to do. You want to forgive. And number two, that the power to forgive comes from dependence on Christ's power within you to complete the forgiveness process through you. And um, I, I think you'll agree that when it comes to the area of forgiveness, that we have a lot of trouble with that sometimes because of very hurt feelings, wounded emotions. And uh, God tells us that uh, we can rejoice in our weaknesses because that's when we depend on him to do it all through us. And so that's good news. That is really good news. The fact that Christ lives in us and wants us to depend on his spirit to live through us every day and that he never leaves us is it's just the best news ever. And so um, I hope, I hope that the last two days, the first facet of forgiving others and today's, the final facet of forgiving others has been helpful to you when it comes to understanding the forgiveness process for the believer in Christ. And tomorrow I am going to share with you day 27. And the title of it is called your settled significance in Christ. And I'm looking forward to sharing that with you at noon tomorrow. And until then, I just want to encourage you to remember that you're happily forever after in Christ. It's already started and he so enjoys you. He enjoys doing life with you. And he wants you to enjoy him too. So I'm just going to sign off for now. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. And I'll see you tomorrow at noon.